Good morning, everyone. Bailiff, can we start the proceedings, please? Morning to all. Oye, oye, oye. Honorable Chief Justice, Honorable Justice of, of Appeal, Honorable High Court Judges, Honorable Masters, this special sitting of the Eastern Caribbean Court, Supreme Court now stands open. Yes, thank you. Bailiff, our Honorable Justices of Appeal of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Honorable High Court Judges and Masters of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, the Right Honorable Sir Charles Michael Dennis Byron, former President of the Caribbean Court of Justice and former Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court and Lady Norma Byron, his Lordship, the Honorable Sir Hugh Rawlins, former Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court and Lady Claudette Rawlins, his Lordship, the Honorable Mr. Justice Winston Anderson, Judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Honorable Attorneys General of the Eastern Caribbean States and Territories, Honorable Chief and Senior Magistrates and Magistrates in each of the OECS member states and territories, Directors of Public Prosecutions of each of the OECS member states and territories, Solicitors General, of each of the OECS member states and territories, Mrs. Michelle John Thibbles and Mr. Carlos Cameron Michelle, Chief Registrar and Deputy Chief Registrar, respectively, of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Mr. Gregory Girard, Court Administrator, and Mr. Francis Letang, Deputy Court Administrator of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, registrars, deputy registrars, and assistant registrars of the high courts in each of the OECS member states and territories. Mr. Dwight Lay, general counsel of the OECS commission, representing the director general of the OECS commission. Ms. Jean Dyer, president of the OECS Bar Association, presidents of the constituent bar associations, of each of the OECS member states and territories, learned members of the inner and utter bar in each of the OECS member states and territories, family of her ladyship, the Honorable Madame Louise Esther Blenman, Justice of Appeal, staff of the court's headquarters and the high court offices in each of the OECS member states and territories, members of the media, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all. This is a special sitting of the court convened to bid farewell to Justice of Appeal Blenman, who demits the Office of Justice of Appeal of this court on the 30th of August this year, as she prepares to ascend to higher heights in her professional career as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Belize. It is therefore only fitting that we recognize and memorialize her many years of service and dedication to the judiciary and the people of the OECS. We are happy to have this remote platform because it has allowed us not to have a special sitting in a particular state, but indeed to have the participation of all our member states and territories uh, and family and friends of Justice of Appeal Benman, wherever they may be logging on to this platform via Zoom. Justice Blenman began her professional career in 1988 as a magistrate, an acting magistrate in the criminal court of Georgetown in Guyana. And in by 1988 and 1991, she was state counsel of the attorney general's chambers in Guyana and 91 to 1993, senior legal advisor in the attorney general's chambers in Guyana. 
1992 and the year 2000. She was a law lecturer of the University of Guyana in private international law, public international law, and the law of torts. Between 1993 and 1996, she was the principal legal advisor in the Attorney General's Chambers of Guyana. 1994 to 1996, Deputy Solicitor General acting in the Attorney General's Chambers of Guyana. And between 1996 and 2000, she entered into private practice again in Guyana. Then she came to the Eastern Caribbean between August 2000 and August 2003. She was the Solicitor General of the Attorney General's Chambers in St. Lucia, the, the seat of the Court of Appeal and the headquarters of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. In September 2003, she joined the bench of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court as High Court Judge, where she served until September of 2012. Justice Blenman, of course, served in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, firstly, from 2003, then in Antigua and Barbuda in 2005, and then in Angola in 2009. On the 10th of September, 2012, Justice Blenman was appointed as a Justice of Appeal. And I had the honor of administering the oath of office to Justice Blenman as a judge of the Court of Appeal at that time. Her brother, Dr. Lloyd Blenman, professor of finance at the University of North Carolina was in attendance. I recall he beamed at her elevation. Sadly, he recently passed or no doubt he would be in attendance at this sitting. I know that she still feels the pain of that loss as she always spoke of him as a pillar of strength for her and her siblings. I want to also mention other areas of service and achievements of Justice of Appeal Blenman. During her employment at the Attorney General's Chambers in Guyana, she was in 1990 awarded a Commonwealth Scholarship, which she undertook and completed at the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies at the University of London. During this time, she was also a pupil of Lord Anthony Lester, Queen's Counsel. On leaving the Attorney General's Chambers in Guyana in 1996, Justice Blenman went into private practice, as I said, as an associate of the late Mr. Rex McKay, Senior Counsel, an eminent jurist. Anyone who got to know Justice Blenman well would be aware of her great admiration and respect for Mr. McKay, Senior Counsel. Justice Blenman has held leadership positions in various organizations, including president of the Lions Club of Guyana and became a Melvin Jones Fellow. She also served as secretary of the Guyana Bar Association. She served as a member of several committees, boards and commissions, both in Guyana and the Eastern Caribbean, including the Public Utilities Arbitration Tribunal for Guyana, the Rules Committee of the Supreme Court of Guyana, the Law Revision Committee of St. Lucia, and the Project Advisory Committee of the OECS CEDA Judicial and Legal Project. As a High Court judge, Justice Blenman served as chair of the Mediation Committee of Antigua and Barbuda of Anguilla, and as a member of the Criminal Justice Reform Committee of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. During her stint, in Anguilla, she also served as a member of Anguilla's Judicial Services Commission. For six years, from 2010 to 2016, Justice Blenman, who is a fellow of the Commonwealth Judicial Education Institute, served as chairman of the Judicial Education Institute of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. During that time, she organized and successfully executed several judicial education programs, 
covering a range of areas from judicial ethics to all stages of the criminal trial, the craft of judgment writing, to training aimed at capacity building and navigating various aspects of the civil justice process, to list but a few. With all that said, Justice Blenman has certainly made her mark in the development of our jurisprudence, and I wish to refer to a few of her notable opinions. She authored such judgments as C Mobile Services Limited and Huawei Technologies. That is a decision which is repeatedly cited uh, before the Court of Appeal as it relates to the principles governing applications for stay. Another is Comodo Holdings and Renaissance Ventures, where in that decision, the relevant principles regarding amendments to stated statements of case were also explored and very well set out. In the case of George Bennett Bryson and George Purcell, that case considered the elements necessary to establish a cause of action in bailment. First domestic insurance, and industrial enterprises, where the principles to be considered in determining whether to strike out a notice of appeal were well postulated. Then there was the case such as Kashigi Limited and Donna Union. That was a case which dealt with the BVI Commercial Court's jurisdiction to grant interim measures in support of foreign arbitration proceedings under section 43 of the BVI Arbitration Act of 2013. Attorney General of Grenada and Mohammed Eshan, a case in public law where, which examined the constitutional right to due process of the law under the Grenada constitution in circumstances where the respondent's Grenadian citizenship was revoked without notice on grounds of national security. There's also the case of Iwet Lane, a case concerning an application to be admitted to practice as an attorney at law. There, the question of the requirements for admission to practice was considered in the context of the judicial discretion reposed in the trial judge when considering the broad question of fitness for admission. And I could go on. But what this demonstrates is that Justice Blenman is a well-rounded jurist who has demonstrated clarity of thought and erudition in her legal opinions in many branches of the law. Justice Blenman is taking her leave of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, having given yeoman service and is moving on to greater heights as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Belize. On my own behalf, and on behalf of the entire judiciary and staff of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, I wish to place on record our sincere thanks and appreciation for your years of service to the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court and indeed to the region. I personally thank you for the assistance you have given me over the years as your Chief Justice. May I also congratulate you on your eminent elevation as Chief Justice of Belize, and may your tour of duty there be as interesting and stimulating as your tour with us, although I hope not as strenuous. I have no doubt that you will serve the judiciary and the people of Belize well. When you started as a Justice of Appeal at the Court of Appeal, I recall with fondness that you gave me a daily calendar or diary of biblical reflections. One of those reflections informs that God's wisdom 
will always lead you to the right end. That he orders your steps, guides your way, and handles your affairs. I wish you good health, God's richest blessings, and that he orders your steps and guide your way as you embark upon this new, though familiar path in your life's journey. I thank you. Yes. I would now wish to call upon Justice of Appeal, Gerard Ferrara. Thank you, uh, learned Chief Justice. Uh, the appropriate protocol having been very ably and I would say fully established by the Chief Justice, I will not uh, tread in that direction. Um, I do want to say very briefly that um, it is a pleasure to also recognize uh, Sir Dennis Byron and Lady Byron and Sir Hugh Rollins and Lady Rollins uh, as part of this uh, special sitting here today. It is my distinct privilege to give brief remarks at this special sitting of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court to mark the retirement from this court of the Honorable Justice Louise Esther Blenman. Madam Justice Blenman has served this court with and the administration of justice in the Eastern Caribbean with great distinction from, as we have heard, 2003, when she was appointed a judge of the High Court, and also from September 2012, when she was appointed and elevated to the position of Justice of Appeal of this court. Justice Blenman's tenure over the last 19 years as a judge was preceded by a distinguished career in academia at the University of Guyana, where for eight years she lectured in private international law, public international law, and the law of torts. This was followed by a sterling career at the public and private bar in her native Guyana. And there she had, as we have heard, the distinct privilege of working under the illuminating leadership and tutelage of her mentor, Mr. Rex McKay, senior counsel, an eminent jurist and leader at the bar in Guyana. It is noteworthy that Justice Blenman's tenure as a judge of this court coincided with some of the most significant developments and reform initiatives undertaken by the court. These reform initiatives all aim at improving the administration of justice and the quality and timely delivery of justice in all member states and territories of the OECS. And Justice Blenman has played a significant role in a number of these initiatives over the years, as has been already traversed by the Learned Chief Justice. Justice Blenman has executed her judicial functions and duties with great care, dedication, and distinction. Her dedication to duty and commitment to upholding the rule of law and the high standards of the judiciary and its independence as the third pillar of government are worthy of recognition and commendation. She has applied herself in the discharge of her judicial duties and functions with talent, intellectual acuity, sound reasoning and judgment and decisiveness. Some of her strengths include a keen sense of discernment, the ability to quickly identify and to get to the nub of the issues for determination, clarity of thought and expression, intellectual and analytical ability, and mature temperament and, of course, scholarship. It is patently clear that Justice Blenman has, in the discharge of her duties, fully embraced these core tenets of a judge, including also notably the importance of thorough preparation to the judicial function and to the proper dispensation of justice and decision-making. 
these admirable qualities and characteristics have sustained a work ethic which has led to the timely preparation and delivery of judgments and to demitting office shortly, as we have heard, with no outstanding judgments. Over the years, Justice Blenman has worked tirelessly, tirelessly and produced a major body of work. As a high court judge, Justice Blenman has heard and determined countless interim and interlocutory applications and conducted many trials, both civil and criminal. As a member of the Court of Appeal, Justice Blenman has dealt with numerous appeals, many of them heavy and complex appeals involving large sums of money or assets and important or complex areas of law. Justice Blenman has delivered innumerable extemporary rulings and decisions. She has authored many reserved judgments of the court and has made her mark in the development of the jurisprudence in the OCS and indeed the English speaking Caribbean. These written judgments, which are part of the permanent record of the court are too numerous to mention. They range from matters of judicial review to constitutional law, from land law to the law of trust and succession, from torts to contract disputes, and from statutory interpretation to the construction of contractual terms. Justice Blenman has also penned judgments of the Court of Appeal covering issues and disputes in such areas as company law, insolvency, and receiverships. Some of her judgments concern the principles applicable to assessment of damages for breach of contract or breach of constitutional or fundamental rights and the assessment of compensation for the compulsory acquisition of private property by the state. Suffice it to be said that several of these judgments have been upheld on appeal to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. Four examples of such judgments are, one, Sexius against the Attorney General of St. Lucia, 2017 UKPC 26. Two, the Honorable Attorney General and another against Isaac, 2018 UKPC 11. Three, Williams against Casepack Company, 2022 UKPC 9. And four, First Caribbean International Bank, Barbados Limited, and another against interested creditors, 2022 UKPC 7. In my experience, it is not uncommon for several of the decisions of the Court of Appeal authored by Justice Blenman to be cited by counsel in the same appeal. In the interest of brevity, I will mention but three such decisions. They are, as mentioned by the learned Chief Justice, see mobile services against Huawei Technologies and Coal Limited, number 17 of 2004. Stanford against Acres, number 19 of 2017, which dealt with the perversity test as formulated in re Eden note which uh, is the test applicable under Section 273 or is equivalent of the BVI Insolvency Act. And three, Aricano Real Estate PLC against Stockman Interhall SA, number nine of 2021, a decision delivered on the 8th of February, 2022, this decision concerned the principles of appellate restraint to be applied in relation to what is termed multifactorial evaluative decisions of a trial judge. This body of work of the learned chief, a learned uh, justice of appeal is significant, impressive and enduring, particularly for its jurisprudential importance. It represents the work and contribution of a gifted academic and eminent jurist. Speaking for myself, 
It has been a pleasure working with Justice Blenman as a member of the Court of Appeal over the last two and a half years. I say this mindful that, as it should be, we have not always agreed on every issue or point of law in an appeal. However, our discussions on points of difference, which have been few, have been spirited and with a high level of cordiality and mutual respect, befitting of the organic process of decision-making by members of the Court of Appeal. In the end, most if not all of these points of difference have been resolved through this convivial and engaging process. It is notable and a testimony to the high quality of your work and career as a judge of this court, that you leave this court with a strong leg legacy of decision-making and jurisprudence. In the years to follow, many of your judgments will be cited and relied upon by counsel, both at first instance and in appeals before the Court of Appeal. In my considered judgment, it will not be too long before that also comes to pass in the country and jurisdiction to which you will shortly be transitioning to assume the high judicial office of Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Belize. The state of Belize will be the beneficiary of your leadership, sound judgment, judicial acumen, and scholarship. Your family must be rightfully very proud of you and all the achievements thus far in your career. In closing, I congratulate you on your new appointment and wish you well in this, the next stage of your judicial career. To our sister judge, our permanent sister judge, the Honorable Louise Esther Blenman, may God continue to bless and keep you from this day forward. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Ferrara. I now call on Justice Ellis. Justice Ellis. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chief Justice. I gratefully adopt the protocol that has already been established. And for the avoidance of doubt, I personally share and heartily endorse the sentiments that have already been expressed by Justice of Appeal Ferrara and by you, Honorable Chief Justice. I want to thank you for permitting me to add to these sentiments and to express my own personal note of gratitude to the person who I have affectionately called SG for over 20 years. Louise Esther Blenman came into my life in the year 2000 when she thankfully assumed the role of the Solicitor General in the Attorney General's Chambers in St. Lucia. I say thankfully because under her leadership, the Chambers became a force to be reckoned with. Each and every attorney and all of the support staff who worked or passed through or were in any way connected to those chambers between the years 2000 and 2003 can testify to her dedication and her drive, her demand for excellence and her uncanny love of the law. I recall that on many occasions when we could not find her in her office, a place where we were convinced that she had permanently taken up residence, she would eventually be tracked down in the library casually flipping through the latest volume of case reports, much like one would do with a popular magazine. This puzzled many of us for some time. We were a young chambers and we simply could not understand why anyone would choose to read law reports for pleasure. But when we quickly realized the almost encyclopedic recall that this afforded her, we recognized how blessed we all were to have her lead the chambers. And I can say on behalf of those colleagues that not one of us is surprised by her career trajectory. SG, not one of us. From the Attorney General, Petrus Compton, to the bearer Martinez is surprised by your most recent elevation as Chief Justice of Belize. And we are tremendously proud and tremendously pleased for you. 
Justice of Appeal Blenman, as a lawyer, High Court judge, and Justice of Appeal, you have been inspirational, infinitely knowledgeable, and you've demonstrated a love of the law, which was and is contagious. That you were also unselfish in sharing your knowledge and experience and willingly assume the role of mentor is quite frankly astounding. On behalf of my colleagues on the High Court bed, both past and present, and on behalf of the masters of the court, I want to thank you for your listening ear and quiet guidance, which you willingly and unselfishly offered to any one of us who asked. And I know that there were many of us who did from time to time. You were always encouraging, always supportive, even when you were talking us of the proverbial ledge. These interventions and the contributions which you have made in the execution of daily tasks will, I am sure, only become known to us after you have limited office. I want to thank you for your loyalty to the court and to this region. Before ascending to the Court of Appeal, you served as a High Court judge in St. Vincent, in Dominica, Antigua, and Anguilla. And I do not overstate the position when I say that you have left an indelible imprint on our court, on our jurisprudence, and in our societies. With over 153 written judgments delivered as a high court judge, and over 92 at the appellate level. These are judgments which have been widely reported and rely upon every single day in our courts. They are a lasting testament to your hard work and dedication. There is not a judge who has come on this bench since 2010 who has not benefited from your steadfast leadership of the JEI. I know that each conference and training seminar was organized at no little personal sacrifice to you. I can say that they were each well received and paying dividends every day in this court. I know that you have made sacrifices of your personal and family life when the job, the, job, the job demanded it. This could not always have been easy and we are grateful for that. Our deepest thanks to your family, especially your parents and your brother who are now deceased, your sisters and your many nieces and nephews who would have had to do without you from time to time while you attended to court business. You have chosen to move on from this region after 23 years of sterling service and your presence will be sorely missed. We look forward to seeing what great things you will accomplish in this new chapter in your life. But I remind you that you are also a St. Lucian and that imposes certain obligations. The first verse of the national anthem says it all. Wheresoever you may roam, Love, O oh love, our island home. As a newly minted daughter of St. Lucia, you have friends and, and dare I say family here, and you will be required to return at every available opportunity. On behalf of my family and on my own behalf, I want to thank you for your thoughtfulness and your insight, your guidance and your humanity but most of all, thank you for your friendship. May you continue to enjoy robust good health and sound mind. I pray that God will continue to bless you during this next phase of your career. I pray not only that God will bless your future labors with success, but that your work here will continue to flourish in your absence. There will no doubt be many more sacrifices made. I pray that God will give you the strength to bear those burdens graciously. May you find many, many receptive hearts and minds for the wisdom that you have to offer. I pray not only that God will bless your future labors with success, but that your work will bear much fruit, which will continue to benefit this Caribbean region for many years. May Almighty God continue to bless and keep you every single day of your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice Ellis. 
May I inquire, I think there's an open microphone, if they would turn their microphone off, please. Thank you. Yes. May I now call on her ladyship, um, the Honorable Madam Paula Guilford. Thank you, Chief Justice. I would like to recognize her ladyship, the Honorable Dame Janice Pereira, M. Pereira, DBE, LLD, Chief Justice, and respectfully adopt the protocol established by her ladyship. Today, I join in celebrating the career of her ladyship, the Honorable Madam Louise Esther Blenman, Justice of Appeal. Today, I bid her farewell after over 19 years of service to this institution. Justice of Appeal Blenman, has exemplified herself as a scholar, a judge, a teacher, and a mentor. I first met Justice of Appeal Blenman while I was a student at the University of Guyana. Justice of Appeal Blenman taught the law of torts and private international law. She was an astute teacher who wanted the best for her students. We were the second batch of students being trained at the University of Guyana School of Law. So she poured her all into us to ensure we were successful for that occasion and in the future. She imparted the importance of life and helped define what success means. It is no doubt that many of us went on to pursue distinguished careers, rising to the life she prepared us for and hopefully her expectations. Many of us from those classes became judges, Queen's Council, and even head of the Caribbean Development Bank. I feel privileged that I was fortunate to be one of her students. Her love for imparting knowledge did not stop with us. For over six years, her ladyship served as the chairperson of the Judicial Education Institute of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Her commitment was to impart the highest quality of continuing legal education to us judges. I remember each of our judicial conferences were always well organized and timely. Her life journey began in the village of Stortville on the west bank of Demerara, her to suburban Georgetown, where she attended the North Georgetown High School before moving to the St. Rose's High School from which she graduated. Justice of Appeal Blenman demonstrated a consistent scholarship and love of learning through her career. She graduated from the University of the West Indies in 1986 with a Bachelor of Laws degree after much hard work as she sought to realize her dream of becoming a lawyer. Her determination to succeed was so great that those who knew her during her student years reliably informed me that, and I quote, she opened the library and closed it down every day that it was open to students, even on Sundays, end of quote. She obtained her legal education certificate from the Hugh Wooding Law School in 1988. In 1990, her ladyship was awarded a Commonwealth scholarship and completed the Commonwealth Lawyers course at the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, University of London, as a pupil of Lord Anthony Lester, Queen's Counsel, who would have impacted her as a role model. In her ascent to the highest judicial office, Justice Blenman began her legal career with the government of Guyana, first as a state counsel at the Attorney's General's Chambers, under the mentor and then Attorney General, the late Keith Messiah, Senior Counsel and then as magistrate, where I, as a student, witnessed her efficient, just, and competent delivery of justice. After that, she proceeded to private practice to work with legal luminary and mentor, the late Rex McKee, senior, senior counsel. In 2003, Justice Blenman was elevated to the position of High Court Judge of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Again, in 2005 to 2006, I had the opportunity of appearing before her as legal counsel while in Antigua and Barbuda, where again, I experienced her high level of professionalism. 
In September of 2012, Justice Blenman was elevated to the position of Justice of Appeal, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, where she served as president of the court on numerous occasions. Justice of Appeal Blenman is known for her timely delivery of judgments, public service, and dedication to the rule of law. Her commitment was illustrated in the seminal elections petition case from Antigua and Barbuda that exemplified she was prepared to go against national will and expectation and hold true to her legal integrity and principles of law as she learned and believed them to be. She's renowned for her prolific writing of judgments, many of which has been affirmed by the Privy Council. When I ascended to the bench, Justice of Appeal Blenman extended words of encouragement to me and often pushed me to step outside of my comfort zone. Justice of Appeal Blenman has always expressed her commitment to family and firm belief in God. She has credited her late brother, Lord, with being her, her exemplar to succeed in a chosen career and his success encourage her to aspire to be just as successful in her profession she chose. Her brother would, would be proud of her achievements. Her legacy to the OECS is a copious treasure trove of legal learning that has impacted the national and regional legal ecosystem and will stand the test of time. As you continue along this path, Justice of Appeal Blendman, I know your footprints will continue to make indelible marks in the sand of time because that is the person you are. Today, I ask you all to join me as I celebrate her scholarship, plethora of legal work and life of, at this institution. I also express my gratitude for your mentorship. As you leave to continue your endeavors, I urge you to remember the words of Billy Graham that, and I quote, the will of the Lord will never lead you where the grace of God cannot sustain you. End of quote, as you, as you go, Justice Blenman, my mentor, Justice of Appeal, please, I know you will go and spread your wings and continue to make your mark in history. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Guilford. We will now have addresses from the inner bar. And the first will be by Mr. D. Lee on behalf of Mr. Kenneth Monplaisy, Queen's Counsel, who is unable to join us this morning. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Madam Chief Justice. The, Madam Chief Justice, with your leave, the protocol list having been established by you, um, I will read Mr. Mopesi's address. Uh, he has asked me to extend his most um, heartfelt apologies to yourself, Mulady, and Justice Blenman for being unable to attend this morning. Unfortunately, he's not very well today. There is always emotional content in any form of retirement to the person retiring and to those from whom the individual is retiring. Today, we are holding a special sitting of the court to mark the retirement of ladyship, the Honorable Madam Louise Blenman, just of appeal of the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal. I am grateful and humbled for the opportunity given to me to express my deep appreciation on behalf of the Bar Association and on my own behalf to you, Honorable Justice Bedman, Blenman, sorry, for your dedication to your work on the Court of Appeal. You have served this court faithfully and well, commencing as Solicitor General in St. Lucia in 2000, when you were called to the bar in St. Lucia that same year. Your appointment as a High Court judge soon followed in 2003. Your appointment and elevation as a Justice of Appeal in September of 2012 was safely predicted. So too was the quality of your reasoned judgments and a perspicacious content. I have retired from court practice, but I do from time to time follow up with case law, particularly from the Eastern Caribbean Court. I was impressed with the judgment of Justice Blenman in the case of the Attorney General and Alan Chastney and Kenneth Casabo delivered on July 4th, 2016, and in the case of Antonio Gelzo and the State, 
about on the 5th of April, 2017. I refer to those two cases, one civil and the other criminal, to illustrate the quality of the reasoning of Justice Blenman in her judgments. I realize that you, Justice Blenman, are being honored today and appreciated to mark your retirement from the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. I am pleased to note, however, that your judicial acumen is not being lost and that you are moving on to higher heights. On behalf of the Bar Associates of, of St. Lucia, I wish to express our deep and sincere appreciation for your dedicated service to the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court and wish you every success in your new position as Chief Justice of the Court of Belize. Thank you, my lady. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I now call on Dr. Francis Alexis, Queen's Counsel. Dr. Alexis. Thank you very much indeed, uh, your ladyship, the Honorable Dame Janice Pereira, Chief Justice. May I be permitted to adopt the protocol as established by your good self, except to address her ladyship, the Honorable Madam Justice. Louise Esther Blenman. Indeed. I have been directed by the president of the Grenada Bar Association, Mr. Derek Sylvester, to transmit to this special sitting compliments of the Grenada Bar. And I have been authorized by him to say what follows. All in profound Congratulations to Madam Justice Blenman on her most deserved elevation imminently to the post of Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Belize. Chief Justice Pereira, 1986 was a very historic year here in Grenada. There was a judgment handed down. The proceedings were presided over by the then acting Chief Justice of Grenada, Justice Dennis Byron, as he then was, now Sir Dennis. And the jury over which he presided entered certain convictions. We may call these the originating proceedings. One consequential case emanating therefrom was filed in the High Court of England and Wales. And the presiding judge in those proceedings in the High Court in England and Wales took it upon himself to make certain pronouncements about the 1986 proceedings. Although it is manifest he had not bothered to inform himself properly on the record. Another consequential case was filed here in Grenada. It reached the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal, presided over by Madam Justice Blenman, Sir Justice of Appeal Michel, Justice of Appeal Acting Webster. And having looked carefully at what the English judge said, Justice of Appeal Blenman described the way he conducted himself as being improper, unfortunate, and contrary to judicial committee. Now, any third world person reading what Justice Blenman said about this English judge would have sat up and taken stock, filled with pride that a third world judge could give this sort of rapping to an English high court judge. Happily, Blenman was vindicated if vindicated were needed. 
when her case reached before the Privy Council. The Lordships of the Privy Council in their own way also wrapped the English judge. I want to refer to another scenario. This time, a new cabinet had been sworn in in Grenada around 2013 or so. And a new cabinet proceeded immediately to have the cabinet secretary removed from office and banished into a statutory post. This case is familiar to his lordship, Mr. Justice Philip, who I see is on the screen. He argued the case for the cabinet secretary. When the case reached the Court of Appeal, again, Madam Justice Benjamin, giving the lead judgment of the court, agreed to by Justice of Appeal Michel, Justice of Appeal Acting Webster. And Blenman spared no words in letting Grenada know that such arbitrary transfer of the cabinet secretary, so capricious it was, in effect demoting her, that the court would not tolerate that. What then do those two cases tell us about Justice of Appeal Blenman? Must be that her mantra is, let justice be done even if the clouds come down. The true grit of which is made a venerable chief justice. This, of course, Dame Janice, Madam Justice Blackman would have learned from your good self and all your predecessors in the office of Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, going back to our founding Chief Justice, Lewis from St. Lucia. These testimonies coming from Grenada are not now being said just for this occasion. Those two judgments, for example, I just referred to, and in particular, the pronouncements of Justice of Appeal Blenman would be found spotlighted in the book, Sir Dennis Byron, Law Legend. More to the point, the president of the Grenada Bar Association, Derek Sylvester, in his autobiography, Trials of a Trial Lawyer, at page 192, testified that in his appearances before Justice Blenman, he found Justice Blenman to be, quote, a legal luminary. We therefore, all of us in Grenada pray that God grant that justice flourishing bellies with Solomonic wisdom under Chief Justice Louise Esther Blenman. May it so please God and may it so please the court. Thank you, Dr. Alexis. We now call on Ms. E. Ann Henry, Queen's Counsel. Ms. Henry. May it please you, my lady, Dame Janice, our Chief Justice. And with your permission, I will adopt the protocol list which you have eloquently delivered earlier in the proceedings. While I acknowledge the presence, of course, by the, if I may put it this way, the lady of the moment, Madam Justice of Appeal, Louise Esther Blenman. I recall for the court today, the words of the late President of the United States of America, John F. Kennedy, 
when he said that we must find time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. And I wish to say how pleased and grateful I am to join with all of those who have spoken and those who are yet to speak and those whose presence will speak for them to say thank you to Justice Louise Esther Blenman. First of all, I thank you for your human service to the administration of justice in the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court for these past 19 years nine of which were spent on the High Court bench and of which you spent four years in my jurisdiction of Antigua and Barbuda and 10 on the Court of Appeal. We are gathered here today on one of the very few blessings of the COVID-19 pandemic because this Zoom platform has very appropriately been embraced by this court as the best medium for the conduct of its business across the Eastern Caribbean region. And particularly given the challenge of transportation within the region at this time, Zoom has been able to bring us all together. And if I may be permitted, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Justice Blenman's family members who are able to join us today to celebrate one who some 22 years ago came to this part of the region when she first left her native Guyana and went to live and work in St. Lucia, a move which brought her closer to her ultimate destiny as a judge of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Justice Blenman, as all of the speakers before me have already said, has enjoyed a good and solid reputation as a polished, courteous and sound jurist who from the moment I met her impressed me as a hard and diligent worker committed to the rule of law and the maintenance of high standards of ethics and probity befitting a jurist particularly in an era as we are now experiencing where high standards are sometimes flippantly disregarded. I recall well when Justice Blenman was appointed to sit as a judge in Antigua and Barbuda in 2005. I think I recall the first appearance in court when she acknowledged that there were among us some persons who had attended university and law school with her who were present at that sitting. It was a very pleasant occasion. And you could see from the very outset that she set for the members of the bar in the way that we present, the high standards that she set for the members of the bar in the way that we presented in court, both in terms of our dress, our treatment of colleagues, litigants, and our and court staff, and in the manner in which we prepared and presented our legal work in court. I have not observed or heard of her in any way diminishing those who have appeared before her, even in face of sometimes spurious arguments, which by nature may have been provocative. Rather, Justice Blenman has maintained a consistent judicial temperament, which we all know to be a fundamental quality of a good judge. One just has to take a cursory glance at the court's website for the period of Justice Blenman's tenure as High Court Judge in Antigua and Barbuda, to recognize that immediately upon her arrival in this jurisdiction, Justice Blenman had a significant and positive impact on the expeditious dispatch of matters and judgments. A deeper dive, however, will show that not only was there quantity, but the judgments were of a very high quality underpinned by thorough and careful preparation and analysis and fundamental fairness. Others who have spoken before me have examined certain of the cases and judgments which have been delivered and are well recognized by Justice Blenman. And, and particularly you, Dame Janice, 
have spoken eloquently to the quality of her scholarship, which is unquestionable, and the thoroughness of her judgments, which shine a light of guidance for those of us who follow behind. I believe that in addition to being blessed with natural intelligence, Justice Blenman made the effort to deliberately dedicate herself to learning her craft from great leaders in the profession, including senior counsel Rex McKay of blessed memory, with whom she practiced in her early years in Guyana, as she was determined to excel in the profession of her choosing. I have no doubt that her time teaching at the University of Guyana in the early years also solidified her understanding of fundamental principles of law, which will later underpin her reasoning in judgments of our court. We must thank Justice Blenman for this. It has been my observation that even in the most trying of circumstances, and she faced some while in this jurisdiction, not long before she left Antigua in 2009, Justice Blenman maintained a temperament which we have come to expect from her and indeed displayed courage by being willing to do what the law requires the judge to do, even though the course the judge must follow is not the popular one, and consistently acted with integrity, uninfluenced by anything other than the law. We live in a cynical world where the judiciary and the legal profession come in for criticism, much unwarranted, and it behoves all of us, whether we practice at the bar or dispense justice from the bench, to be mindful of the importance of these qualities as they bolster and strengthen that which underlies all of our work, the rule of law. I especially thank Justice Blenman for her consistency in this regard, all the more so because the life of a judge is a lonely one and particularly in small jurisdictions. Judges must conduct both their personal and public lives in such a manner as to be beyond reproach. This is a very demanding standard, which can only be managed, I believe, if one maintains high ethical standards, which guide the decisions one makes. Unquestionably, Justice Blenman has demonstrated that in her career. And I wish to share with you words which Justice Blenman delivered on the occasion of the admission to the bar of her niece and nephew in Guyana. And these are words that very clearly Justice Blenman lives by. It is encouraging that both of you are aware of the need to be civil to members of the public and to your colleagues at the bar and critically to the bench. How we conduct ourselves both in and out of court must serve to ensure that confidence is reposed in the justice system. Fidelity must always be shown to the rule of law also. As you enter this noble profession, I know that you will maintain the collegiality with your peers and others with whom you will interact, including the judges and court staff. To my mind, this encapsulates the view of the profession that Justice Blenman has chosen to follow and that she has maintained throughout her career. As I close, as part of my tribute to Justice Blenman, I believe it is true for me to say that my colleagues in Antigua and Barbuda wish to thank me, thank you for the time spent here, particularly in your work in getting mediation off to a solid foundation and your insistence that in attending our matters, which we pre present in court, we have preceded our presentation by thorough preparation and thoughtful contemplation. I want to let you know, Justice Blenman, how proud I am as a person of you and your accomplishments, and to thank you for your assistance to me from time to time. I mean it sincerely when I say that our loss is Belize's gain and I extend congratulations to you on your imminent elevation. I wish you all that is good, and I look forward to meeting with you again in the future. May it please you, my lady. Thank you, my lady, Dame. Thank you, Ms. Henry. 
May I now call on Mr. Thomas Astafan, Queen's Council. Mr. Astafan. My lady, good morning, Madam Chief Justice, Madam Justice Brenman, Justices of Appeal, my lords, my lady. It is indeed a heavy burden I bear coming in at number eight behind eight stellar speakers who said everything that there can be said about Madam Justice Blenmark. It is as if I am batting at number eight for the West Indies cricket team in 1982, following behind Greenwich, Haynes, Richards, Gomes, Lloyd, Dujon, and Marshall, with a score on 756 for six. Perhaps I should be rescued by a declaration by the captain. But to do that would be to be a coward, which I am not. I first met Justice Blenman in 2003 in St. Lucia when she was the general and I was co-prosecuting counsel in the infamous cathedral murders. So it was that in September of 2009, when Justice Blenman came to Anguilla as our resident judge to take the place of our then departing resident judge, Justice um, George Creaky, now Dame Pereira. And in my mind, small be it, I was wondering how Justice Brenman was, was going to fill the shoes of that eminent judge who had sat here for six years. Well, I was pleasantly surprised in every respect because Justice Blenman brought her personality and her strength and faith to the bench. And she, in my interactions with Justice Blenman, she on the bench, I at the bar, was always very kind to counsel, all counsel, always guided counsel, always respected counsel. And she carried that up onto the Court of Appeal when I appeared before her as well. So it is for me today, a very personal occasion. And if you will allow me, Madam Chief Justice, to say this, um, Madam Justice Blenman, Faye, Christopher and Rennes send their regards to you as well. Now I wish to recognize on my right, the presence of the Honorable Attorney General of Anguilla, who is on leave, but broke his leave to be present in honor of you, Justice Blenman. I will not go beyond the five minutes allotted to me. I think I have like 30 seconds left. All I need to say is this, Justice Blenman. It was an honor and a pleasure knowing you as a judge and a justice of appeal. And I look forward to hearing brilliant things continuing with you. May it please you. Thank you, Mr. Astafan. May I now invite uh, Ms. Jean Dyer, president of the OECS Bar, to make remarks. Ms. Dyer? May it please the court. My ladies and my lords, we have virtually assembled here this morning to acknowledge and commend the outstanding and notable contributions of Justice of Appeal Blenman as she demits office. I wish today to show the OECS Bar Association's gratitude for the contribution Justice Blenman has made to this court over the last 19 years. Before so doing, permit me to acknowledge Justice Blenman and to otherwise adopt the protocol which has already been fully established by you, my lady. I am particularly pleased and consider it fitting that this special sitting should be convened in the presence of such distinguished company. Over 270 persons are virtually present here today. This to my mind speaks volumes. It is a privilege and an honor for me to have the opportunity to speak about Justice Blenman, who I consider to be one of my mentors. Others have spoken about Justice Blenman's early life, 
her achievements at university, and her time at the bar. The focus of my remarks will pay tribute to Justice Blendman's contributions as a judicial officer. I dare say without fear of contradiction that Justice Blendman has served our court and our people in the OECS with great distinction for the past 19 years. I can, as can every other member of the bar, I, sorry, I can attest, as can every other member of the bar, that Justice Blendman has been true to her oath. She has brought to our court a masterful understanding of the law, and that coupled with her exemplary diligence to the law and her selfless commitment to its adjudication made her a tremendous asset to this court. It is often said that a good lawyer knows the law, but a great lawyer knows the judge. When Justice Blenman was assigned to Anguilla in 2009, we didn't have to research what to expect of her as a judge. She was already known to us through the various judgments that she had written. We knew from those judgments, and in particular, from the Dean Jonas versus Jackie Quinn Leandro case in Antigua, wherein she had invalidated the election in three contested constituencies on the basis that she was not satisfied that the late open of the poll did not affect the final result, that we could expect her to dispense justice in Anguilla without fear or favor, affection or ill will. During Justice Blenman's tenure in Anguilla, she was always polite, courteous, self-assured and eloquent and had an excellent judicial temperament. She was somewhat of a hard taskmaster who required us to be diligent and to maintain the highest standards at the bar. She did not hesitate to from time to time admonish us, but she did so, quote unquote, off the record and off the tape. Justice Blenman also active man actively managed all the cases which came before her. She was most familiar with every matter. I was particularly impressed by her ability to cut through masses of detail and to go directly to the heart of the problem. This allowed her to, quote unquote, without taking a view on the matter one way or the other, narrow the issues between the parties and thereby facilitate settlement of many of the matters. Justice Bellman was elevated to the Court of Appeal in September 2012. Whilst we missed her after her departure, we did not forget her lessons. In fact, from time to time, we often reminded each other that as Justice Blenman would say, we have, quote unquote, we have to maintain the standards. Mrs. Gums Connor, who would address you shortly, can attest to this. At the appellate level, Justice Blenman's work ethic can be described in two words. Apparently, Intifatigable. Sitting on the Court of Appeal, one would imagine is not an easy task. The issues before it often have emotion and occasionally even a little theater. These, of course, are red herrings in the majority of cases, and it's fair to say that Justice Blenman has not been distracted by such theater at all. Her ability to cut to the chase and get to the point on occasions has informed observers in the court, noting with great admiration her ability to get to the point so, so quickly. Whilst it is traditional on these occasions to undertake some review of a departing judge's jurisprudential legacy, time unfortunately does not permit to do so, and my lady, I believe you and others have already done so in any event. I, however, dare say without fear of contradiction that Justice Blenman has significantly contributed to the development of our jurisprudence. She leaves behind over 200 judgments in dozens of diverse subjects, which are reflective of great effort and quality time spent, and most of which will be favorably referenced. Justice Blenman, we sincerely thank you for that. Over the years, Justice Blenman has always gone out of her way to support continued legal education initiatives within the OECS. 
She has been most supportive of the efforts of the Oasis Bar in this regard. Even after Justice Blenman admitted office as the chair of the Judicial Education Institute, she continued to support our efforts and we are most thankful for that. Speaking for myself, I'm thankful for her mentorship, guidance and encouragement over the years in my capacity as the law conference coordinator. I was shocked when I heard that Justice Blenman was retiring from our court. Given her youthful appearance, energy, and drive, I wondered how it was possible that she had retained the retirement age. When I later learned that she was demitting office to assume the position of Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Belize, I then felt a deep sense of loss. Whilst I was proud of her achievement, I simply couldn't fathom that Justice Blenman would believe in our court. I will miss Justice Blenman's incisiveness and insightfulness and her probing questions from the bench. It has been a personal privilege, my lady, to have known you and to have worked with you in your former capacity as the chair of the JI. On behalf of the Oasis Bar Association, I thank you for your distinguished service your dedication to our community and to the law and to this court. I also wish Justice Blenman a satisfying and distinguishing career, sorry, distinguished service in the Supreme Court of Belize. I am confident that Justice Blenman's commitment to hard work and her quest for excellence, which she has exhibited thus far, will continue. We have been fortunate indeed to have, to have Justice Blenman in our court. We need people with Justice Blenman's commitment and experience and her understanding of the law at this very time. But regardless, we do wish Justice Blenman farewell with much affection and gratitude. And personally, I hope that our paths continue to cross as it pleases the court. Thank you, Ms. Dyer, president of the OECS Bar. Uh, we now invite Ms. Josephine Gums Connor. She made remarks. Mrs. Gums Connor. Thank you, Milady, Madam Chief Justice. May it so please you, as well as other members of the appeal, and also all justices, and the extensive protocol which you have already set. Milady, if I may. It is my honor to represent the Anguilla Bar Association on this occasion, which for me, and I think for us as a bar, is filled with mixed emotions of gratitude on the one hand for the service of Madam Justice Blenman, but it is also tinged with sadness at her leaving. Milady, all the speakers before me have already spoken to the erudition of Her Ladyship uh, Justice Blenman, and it is unquestionable. Her thoroughness and her reasoning in her judgments, typically written in a manner that is digestible even to those who may not have a legal background, uh, demonstrates, Milady, that to, in my mind, to the heart of it, she is really a teacher at heart. But Milady, in seeking to both capture and convey the impact of Justice Blenman on our jurisdiction in Anguilla within my five minute window, my reflections took me back to where we would have learned as part of our legal studies um, that legal systems, one should try uh, to know your judge since the interpretation of the law may also reflect their own principles of morality, philosophy, reasoning, or individual conscience. But whether one subscribes to that theory may be arguable, but I can say in my mind, Justice Blenman, in my view, exemplifies turning that construct on its head. And by that, I mean, she took what I think was a purposeful interest in knowing her courtroom to ensure that the solitary goal by which she circumscribes herself, namely that the dispensation of just justice 
should exist in a climate where high standards are practiced. Now, Milady, if I, I, other speakers before me would have made certain phrases which may at this point seem repetitive, but it only uh, speaks to the consistency of Justice Blendman. So that, that concept of the high standards, you may hear it a few more times uh, in, my, in my thoughts expressed today. As legal practitioners, we know that in the cut and thrust of legal practice and in, the, in this adversarial system, it can sometimes dull the shine of colleagueship as perhaps egos and the passions and tensions of clients. And sometimes the rigid inflexibilities can actually negatively impact the truest form of justice being served. Perhaps we were at a low point in our practice back in 2009 when Justice Blendman became our resident judge. But if you understood that one of Justice Blendman's core principles is determination to ensure that the administration of justice is upheld without reservation, then you would also appreciate that there is little that misses her keen observations. Within the weeks and months that followed in her stint with us, her ladyship in her own inimical style would proceed matters not just with expressions of delight in seeing counsel, always showing genuine interest in counsel's well-being, but would smoothly segue into the question, has counsel spoken? It, it, it would not matter if you thought that the matter at hand was one that was a fait accompli. By that action and the consistency of that approach, created a climate that led to a warmth in the courtroom, where with the sprinkling of what she would call moments of levity, the practice of law, no matter how thorny the issues, became a pleasure. When mediation was still in its formative stages, her ladyship had already cemented the concept by having practitioners speak, engage, dissect, and refine the issues. The administration of law in Anguilla flourished under her tenure. There are two other principles which I would like to highlight. Justice Blenman believes as a core principle that respect, respect for all persons, should be reflective both in and out of the courtroom. It is telling that in her court, you could, you could feel that this was ingrained in her being. Her courtroom reflected that principle, whether you were a prisoner in the dock, whether you were at the bar or in the gallery. The idea that respect should at all times be uh, held to that high standard was maintained. And Anguillians as a whole, the Anguillian community felt the, the, the effect of that, um, of that principle. The other aspect that I'd like to mention is her mentorship. Now, mentorship for her was not, in my view, not from the standpoint of arrogance and knowing it all, but really from a place of humility in understanding that growth and elevation at the bar was one in which you were looking back at where you were and helping others along. She was able to offer that mentorship to young counsel at the bar. And when I say young counsel, um, all of us, uh, except those perhaps who perhaps have attained uh, being in the inner bar, consider ourselves as young counsel. Justice Blenman believed that setting high ethical standards of practice and professionalism should maintain. And the Anguilla Bar feels utterly grateful for that um, for, for what you did for us, Justice Blenman. It is reflected so often in the many speeches which we have given since your departure over and over at the opening of our law year. There are always aspects that refer to your stellar practice and the love that even at the bar we could feel coming from you. I will say this as sotte voce, but not sotte voce. Amongst the ladies, of the bar, we would often chuckle 
at the fact that Justice Blenman would not just encourage us to hold those high standards of practice of law, but was also generous with her compliments if she saw us in more social occasions, as she is also a lady of immaculate style and decorum. Her high standards also related to that. Milady, we will miss you, Madam Justice Blenman. We thank you for your superlative service to the court and to the Eastern Caribbean uh, Supreme Court and to the people that is served by it. We know that the country of Belize will be the recipient of your dedicated commitment in the administration of justice. Milady, may God guide, guard and protect you in this new journey. May it so please you, Madam Chief Justice. Thank you, Mrs. Gums Connell. I now invite Mr. Ronald Marks to make remarks. May it please you, my lady, my lords. Yes. With your leave, I'd like to establish the pro protocol already being established. I wish to adopt, same. My lady, it's a, an honor and a privilege to rise, albeit virtually, to bid farewell and best wishes to Justice of Appeal Blenman on behalf of the Bar Association of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Justice Blenman has earned the respect and fondness of the Bar in this jurisdiction as we can, and as we can see throughout wherever she, she traveled in her, in her judicial career. My lady, to use the analogy of, um, to adopt the analogy of Senior Counsel Astafan, all has been said that can be said um, from those eloquent speakers, and we are well now within the within the um, the. We've gone into the stadiums now to have the some supporters to come on, my lady. But, my lady, we it, we must. It would be remiss of me if we did we, remarks were not made in relation to her tenure here, my lady, my lords. When the president, our president of the Bar Association called and asked me and afforded me this opportunity, I was humbled, but not completely surprised as I have both in open court and in private declared my respect for her ladyship scholarship and my admiration for her demeanor and delivery. My lady, my lords, when we started practice here in this jurisdiction. Mr. Colin Williams, Mr. Stephen Williams, they, were, they started in 1998. I started 1999. Mr. Daniel, Dwayne Daniel, he started about a year after. And things have changed so much since then, my lady, my lords. In those days, my lady, female judges were few and far between, especially on the Court of Appeal. Things have improved vastly since then. When Justice Blenman came to us in 2003, she immediately demonstrated what all of the speakers spoke of before, that is her hard work and dedication to duty and expected, well, demanded the same of us and made us better practitioners as a result. Over the years, we've heard of her repertoire that she has built up authorities that have shaped the jurisprudence in this jurisdiction and often relied on in our own submissions. An observation, my lady, my lords, is that a common thread that runs through all of these judgments is the fidelity to the rule of law, justice, fairness, and in the case of criminal matters, the recognition of the dignity of every defendant and her commitment and application and respect for the law, especially as it relates to constitutional rights. My lady, she does so, her ju judgments are so easy to read. As pointed out before, we, I had a lecturer who uh, 20, about 25 years ago described to me that reading of judgment sometimes is akin to mixing concrete with your eyelashes. 
lady, no such analogy can be made with regards to Justice Bledman's judgment. Many have been referred to Milady, and I'm aware of my limited time. So I would just refer to a very recent um, decision in February of this year, the case of Akim Mona and the Queen. Justice Webster, Justice of Appeal Webster and, and Michelle would have concurred with that um, judgment that was delivered by Justice Blenman. And that case was an appeal against a murder where a 25 year old gentleman stabbed to death an 18 year old, pleaded guilty, albeit not at the absolute force authority, uh, um, opportunity, sorry, he pleaded guilty and he was sentenced to 18 years imprisonment. He appealed and on the face of it, any experienced practitioner would say 18 years for a case of a murder that took place by stabbing in an open, um, in, in the public, in the view, killing of a teenager in, the, in view of other teenagers. It was a hard call to see how that would be reduced. However, over that, during that appeal being heard, it came out and was argued by his counsel, the very, um, the, the very learned Mr. Um, Russell Ferguson, that it took seven years for that appeal to come before the court. The prosecutor urged that there should just be a declaration that his constitutional rights were obviously um, infringed upon. However, true to her style, Justice Blenman make, gives effect to law and ended up reducing that sentence by two years to reflect the importance of persons' constitutional rights. And that, to me, is something that we need to advance, especially with this new era of change that we're going through. In that judgment, Justice Blenman referred to three, if not more, decisions of the CCJ and gave effect to them. I only have five minutes, so I would not comment too much on that very controversial topic. But I remember when the first appeal I sat where the entire panel was constituted all of female judges. I left, I think we were just withdrawing an appeal. I certainly there was a, not, a, and I came out and I was grinning from ear to ear and my sister looked at me and in not so diplomatic words, um, inquired of whether or not I was losing control of my faculties, my mental faculties, because I had a big grin on my face from ear to ear. She said, why are, you, why are you laughing? And I said, I looked at that panel and I saw my two daughters. So continue to smash those ceilings, Justice Blenman, and make it better for all of our girls in this region. We thank you so much for your stellar service and remind you of what Justice Farah told you, that you belong to us. That's just a temporary loan that we're giving there. You're permanently part of our, our family and we will miss you so much. All the best to you. Thank you, Mr. Marks. And we now move to the territory of the Virgin Islands. And I invite Mr. Jonathan Addo. Mr. Addo. Thank, thank you, Madam Chief Justice. I'm just, apologies. Um, Madam Chief Justice, honorable justices, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, may it please your ladyship, I respectfully adopt the protocol already established. And by way of brief and somewhat unplanned preface, my senior Mr. Astafan regretted being selected at number eight. Well, sir, imagine being 12th man on that particular team, at least you're on the pitch. But I digress. I have been invited to offer a few words on behalf of the utter bar of the territory of the Virgin Islands. And although I offer words of thanks on behalf of my peers, in reality, this is a valediction. And as with most valedictions, they're always tinged with a little sadness. One only need listen to the observations made today to know that our considerable loss is to the significant gain of our brothers and sisters in Belize. 
And by that, I do not confine that windfall to our peers at the Belizean bar. I mean the entire benefit that will accrue to the people of Belize, their system of governance and constitutional rights, but also the very visible imprimatur of having your ladyship, uh, Justice of Appeal Blenman, at the very head of a national judicial system. I for one know that not only will they be met with fairness and compassion, but also a fierce ent intellect and a devotion to due process. I know I speak on behalf of all of my peers at the Utter Bar when I say that it has been both a personal and professional pleasure appearing before your ladyship, albeit that uh, I note that you have never once found in my favour, but that detail notwithstanding, there are three abiding impressions of your ladyship that will remain indelibly marked on my mind, and I suspect also of my peers at the Utter Bar. The first and perhaps most high profile legacy in our jurisdiction is your ladyship's well-known judgment, which has been touched upon uh, by the learned Chief Justice in the case of C-Mobile Services Limited and Huawei Technologies uh, uh, Limited, a case that is perhaps more quoted than any other in the BVI Commercial Court. The right to a stay is not simply important. It is often the single most invaluable form of interim protection whilst the wheels of justice grind on. A godsend for the client and welcome relief for the lawyer who has come second in that first instance decision. So if one were looking for a measure of all the qualities that your ladyship possesses and uh, that have been touched on today, we will now miss all of those qualities, but they are there contained in one case, intellectual rigor, balance, clarity of thought, and of course, a just result. The fact that this judgment was never appealed, nor the logic underpinning it ever challenged, is testament to your intellect, your ladyship. Which leads me to my second observation, and that is as an advocate appearing before your ladyship. I recall appearing before your ladyship, fresh off the boat, so to speak, from London, early on in my career at the bar in the BVI. I was struck by your ladyship's great charisma which appeared to simply leap, leap out from the bench to those of us in the, utter, in the utter bar. It's difficult to pin down what ingredients lead to such personal charisma. Imagine trying to explain to someone what made, for example, the, the late great Muhammad Ali or Martin Luther King so charismatic. You'd be there for many hours trying to do so. And so with your ladyship, I shall not attempt such a discourtesy either, but simply express what is so self-evident an enviable mix of gifts, a great sense of humour, no hearing in which Justice of Appeal Blenman sat ever passed without at least one moment of hilarity. Your ladyship's beaming smile to all of us at the bar at the start of proceedings, instantly relaxing the parties, and your lordship's firm command of the court, but gentle nature to the court staff. This made a lasting impression on me, but on also all of us appearing before you. Which leads me to my third and final observation, in which I turn to the words of the great Maya Angelou, who once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And as an advocate before your court, we at the Utter Bar always felt that we had a fair crack of the whip. We were treated equally, with respect, and for nervous newcomers welcomed warmly. So of all the legacies to leave, I hope that this is the one you cherish the most. And in closing on behalf of the Utter Bar of the BVI, we wish you and your family Godspeed in your new endeavor. And we thank you for your energy, your commitment and your timeless contribu contribution to the jurisprudence and practice of the law in our jurisdiction. And we wish you the very best of British Virgin Islands luck in your next chapter. I thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Addo. And now we will invite our dear sister, Justice of Appeal Blenman, uh, to respond. Justice Blenman. Thank you. 
My Lady Chief Justice, Dean Janice Pereira, DB, LLD, please permit me to adopt the protocol which you have so impressively established. However, also permit me to recognize the presence of former Chief Justice Sir Hugh Rollins and Lady Rollins, together with the presence of Sir Dennis Byron and Lady Byron, and Justice Vincent Anderson of the Caribbean Court of Justice. Also in attendance today is my valued mentor and senior, Rex McKay, senior counsel, who at 93 years old is still with us and is in attendance today. I also acknowledge the presence of Reverend Messiah, the widow of my former mentor, Keith Messiah of blessed memory. Chief Justice, with your permission, I would also like to acknowledge the participation of my colleagues from judiciaries outside of the OECS who are with us today. In addition, I acknowledge the participation of my loving sisters, my nieces, nephews, cousins, close friends, and wonderful friends, all of whom have taken the time to join the special sitting. Dame Janice, I must most sincerely thank you for convening this special sitting in my honor, bearing in mind that this is the period of the long vacation when most persons are in need of some respect. Indeed, many persons have already traveled abroad on much needed occasion and have conveyed their regards. I'm also grateful for the valuable contribution of the indefatigable Mr. Carlos Michel and Mr. Dylan Billy in organizing this special sitting. It is perhaps an understatement to indicate that I am overwhelmed by the sheer number of persons in attendance today. I know that they are in excess of 290 persons joining us virtually. I am particularly grateful for the very kind things that have been said as I conclude one of the most important milestones in my professional life, namely public service to the OECS subregion, a region which I hold dear. I am profoundly grateful that I was afforded the opportunity to serve for the last 23 years in the Eastern Caribbean, and I cherish this immensely. As I reflect on my life thus far, all that I have done and all that I am are attributable to the Lord's blessings. I thank Almighty God for his many blessings. In addition, a large measure of my accomplishments is the culmination of the values, love, and nurturing of my dearly departed mom and dad, Daphne and Harold Blendon. Their values, love, resilience, kindness, ethics, discipline, hard work, and respect for others were imparted to their children. They had great aspirations for their children, which were fulfilled by the professional accomplishments of their children. Also, I owe a debt of gratitude to my only and beloved recently departed brother, Professor of Finance, Dr. Lloyd Blenman. He was my first mentor and trusted friend. He epitomized excellent personal and professional living with kindness, hard work, dignity, and respect for others. He was my professor, first professional role model, and for this, I am eternally grateful. Generally, no one can succeed without the support and mentorship of others. In this regard, I am no different. While still attending the Hewitt Law School in the years 1987 and 1988, I had the good fortune of doing my pupillage in Grenada with the prominent lawyer, Mr. Carol Bristol, Queen's Counsel, deceased, whom his five interns formally referred to as Daddy Bristol. Mr. Bristol was kind to us 
and selflessly shared his knowledge and resources with us. He was a great Google master from whom I learned much. In 1988, having been called to the bar in Guyana, I joined the Attorney General Chambers, where I served in various capacities, including Deputy Solicitor General, under the exemplary leadership of the great jurist and legend, Honorable Keith Stanislaus Messiah, SC, deceased. He was my first legal mentor. I have benefited immensely from working very closely with him and was initially assigned to him. He is renowned for his legal scholarship, erudition, dignity, fearlessness, independence, fidelity to the rule of law, yet very down to earth and friendly. He had an impressive work ethic, which I sought to emulate. Indeed, he worked tirelessly in chambers daily from very early in the mornings to late in the evenings. I thoroughly enjoyed my tenure at the Attorney General's Chambers in Guyana. And this is where I hone my skills as a litigator and a legal advisor. Simultaneously, I taught at the University of Guyana and developed a love for training and mentorship. While serving in the Attorney General's Chambers, I was fortunate to be awarded a Commonwealth Scholarship, which enabled me to have a professional attachment to the late Lord Anthony Lester of Kernhill. He was a brilliant public lawyer and an exceptional litigator, and I gained much from that attachment since he took time to train and teach me. On leaving AG's chambers in Guyana, I was further blessed when the eminent regional jurist, Mr. Rex McKay, who, as I indicated, is with us today, kindly invited me to serve as an associate of his firm. It was an honor, because in my view, he is one of the best lawyers I have ever seen. And he practiced extensively in all areas of the law. Senior, as I fondly call him, like Kit Messiah, had an exacting work ethic. Consequently, you will therefore understand where in large part I got my work ethic from. Mr. McKay is a giant of a man, a legal giant, and a fearless jurist. He continues to be a source of inspiration and support to me. And even at the age of 93, he still engages me in discussions on thorny legal issues, and our discussions are intellectually stimulating. Be it while serving in AG's chambers or in private practice, I was always passionate about litigation, the rule of law, fair and efficient justice, and the protection of fundamental rights. This often resulted in my appearing in court with one case in the morning and another in the afternoon, and or rendering fair and balanced legal opinions on a myriad of legal issues. Both Messiah and McKay taught me very early that adherence to the rule of law, separation of powers, and the protection of fundamental rights were critical to the effective functioning of the justice system. These are some of the principles which I continue to hold dear. I owe much of what I am today as a jurist to the excellent fundamental examples that they have set. While in Guyana, I served on the Rules Committee of the Supreme Court, which was then headed by Chancellor Kennard, ORCCH. In 1999, Chancellor Kennard inquired of me whether I was interested in becoming a judge of the Supreme Court of Guyana. While given the inquiry active consideration, the then Attorney General of St. Lucia, Honorable Petrus Compton, telephoned me and indicated that the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, under the exemplary stewardship of Chief Justice Sir Dennis Byron, was embarking on a number of fire reaching reforms, which included the promulgation of new rules of procedure which we know as the Civil Procedure Rules 2000, technological reforms, the introduction of code connected mediation, and modernizing the code structure. The AG indicated that his chambers needed someone 
who was an experienced litigator to train the staff and serve as solicitor general. Since I had never visited St. Lucia, I accepted the invitation to visit and meet the staff and review the library resources because as Justice Ellis indicated, this was very important to me. The decision for me to apply to be appointed as Solicitor General slash Permanent Secretary of St. Lucia was an easy one. I was also thrilled at the prospect of participating in the intended transformational reforms. I applied for the position and was selected as Solicitor General. While serving as Solicitor General, I was provided with the opportunity to work closely with the brilliant and visionary Sir Dennis on a number of reforms in 2000. And for this, I'm sincerely grateful. In particular, I served on his mediation committee. I particularly enjoyed serving as Solicitor General of St. Lucia and have made lifelong friends from Chambers. We worked hard and well together in Chambers. The collegiality among us was exceptional. In fact, the members of Chambers, to me, are almost family. I even got a lovely godchild from a staff member in Chambers, and my godchild is now reading for the Bachelor of Laws. The AG's Chambers in St. Lucia, as I then knew it, remains very new, dear to my heart. I specifically thank all of the judges before whom I appeared in the Eastern Caribbean, since they were very kind to me. I fondly recall appearing before the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeal, and Dr. Joseph Archibald of blessed memory was a member of the panel that was presided over by Sir Dennis. On conclusion of the appeal, Dr. Archibald sent for me and inquired how long I was Solicitor General. I told him that I was recruited from Guyana a year ago to train the staff of the AG's chambers. He said to me in his inimitable style, Madam Solicitor General, you should be on the bench. You're wasting your time. Within a few short months thereafter, I received an application form to apply for the Office of High Court Judge of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. As my contract had not been completed, I wrote to the Judicial and Legal Services Commission and indicated that I was interested in being appointed as a judge once I'd completed my contractual obligation as Solicitor General. Two years later, the position of High Court Judge was again advertised in 2003. I applied and was appointed as a judge of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court in September 2003. Sir Dennis Byron was at the helm of the court and was largely instrumental in my judicial appointment. Having been appointed as a judge, I served in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Antigua and Barbuda, and Anguilla. I also did a few short stints in the Commonwealth of Dominica. My service as a high court judge for nine years has been gratifying and rewarding. It was during that period that I developed the law for judgment writing. Also on occasions and on my own initiative, with the approval of the Chief Justice, I provided training to the bar and ad hoc training to the staff members, both in Antigua and Barbuda and Anguilla. This enabled me to continue the fulfillment of one of my passions, namely that of mentoring. I have had the benefit of serving on the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court with outstanding jurists who were and are welcoming and supportive. The registrars and administrative staff in these jurisdictions were supportive of me and very kind to me. In, in addition, I served on a number of ad hoc committees while doing what I love most, dispensing judge, judge, justice, I'm sorry. As a high court judge, I also served as faculty member for seminars and conferences that were hosted by the Judicial Education Institute. I worked very well with the then chair of the JEI, Sir Hugh Rollins. This culminated in my appointment as the chair of JEI in 2010 by Sir Hugh, who was then Chief Justice. In my capacity as chair of JEI, I was able to continue to work closely with Sir Hugh and with this, his salutary example of scholarship and excellent judicial leadership of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. 
He was always inspiring, encouraging, and hardworking. He's a luminary. His trust and confidence in me led to my spearheading some important and impactful projects during his stewardship, for which I'm eternally grateful. I am extremely thankful to Sir Hugh Rollins and Lady Rollins for their kindness and support. Sir Hugh demitted office in September 2012, and Dame Janice succeeded him. In September 2012, I was elevated to the Court of Appeal, and you have heard that Dame Janice administered the oath to me. The past 10 years as an appellate judge working closely on the bench with Dame Janice have been enriching and totally enjoyable for me. I've also worked closely with Dame Janice in an extrajudicial capacity. And for the last four years of my chairmanship of the JEI, I was privileged to have even been provided the opportunity to work closer with Dame Janice in convening several international conferences and high level meetings that were sponsored by the Judicial Education Institute. Like her predecessors, Dame Janice had the court with distinction and is an excellent jurist. Equally, it has been a pleasure working with all of my appellate colleagues, and I cherish the collegiality which we share. I salute them for their constant efforts, which are aimed at ensuring that the high standards, and here you have again the high standards, which are set by the court are maintained. I am grateful for the opportunity to have contributed to the rich jurisprudence of the region and still enjoy judgment writing as much as when I first became a judge 19 years ago. Dame Janice is the longest serving Chief Justice and continues to reform the court. In fact, we are able to have this special sitting in large measure due to some of the technological advancements that were made on the Dame Janice's stewardship, including the different facilities which are available in all of the jurisdictions and territories of our court. I am impressed by the fact that our court shares its expertise with regional and other courts. Dame Janice and I even formed a two-member faculty that was invited by the executive of the Bar Association of Barbados to train their members on their civil procedure rules. It was the two of us alone for two days that conduct, conducted that training. It was a wonderful experience, which in my mind stands out as a laudable example of our court sharing its expertise with the wider Caribbean. For this, Dame Janice must yet again be highly commended. Over the past 19 years, I've been inspired by my colleagues, both on the Court of Appeal and the High Court, and have learned something from each of them. I value the collegiality that I share with my colleagues, and as Justice Ferrar has indicated, we've had several spirited discussions, which in my mind results in the high quality of judgments that are produced by this court. Even though this may sound like a self-serving statement, I'm sure I'll be forgiven on this occasion <laughs> to do that, because it is true. I will surely miss the cross-fertilization of our ideas as appellate judges, and I will always cherish the warmth and friendship. To all of my friends across the wider Caribbean, both within and outside of the judiciaries, I thank you for your consistent support and encouragement. I single out for a special mention in this regard, the Honorable Mr. Winston Justice Anderson of the Caribbean Court of Justice. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court is renowned as a court of excellence with a history spanning over 55 years. The jurisprudence of this court is rich as it is precedent setting. Our judgments are cited in many courts in the Commonwealth and have stood the test of time. For this, the court must be justly proud. On the Court of Appeal and in similar vein, the present panel has maintained this standard of excellence, both in relation to the quality and quantity of judgments, 
and all of the judges have worked tirelessly. We have motivated each other to serve over and above what's required. In fact, it isn't unusual for our court to sit from nine in the morning on occasion until eight, nine o'clock at night. I am grateful to all of my appellate colleagues for their inspiration and support over the last 10 years where I served as an appellate judge. I've always shared a wonderful relationship with the members of the OECS bar and the constituent bar. In my view, the public and the private bar are of equal importance. I thank you for your unwavering support and kind assistance over the year. I commend the members of the inner and outer bar for your outstanding work and support for the court and implore you to continue to be independent and fearless in your pursuit of justice and to avail yourselves of every opportunity for continuing education and development, both formally and informally. On a related matter, I thoroughly enjoyed working with the members of the Bar Associations of this region and also with the Bar Associations of the wider region. On occasion, I was able to work with OCBA as a member of faculty in presenting at a conference that was hosted by OCBA. For me, it has been a great privilege when I chaired the JEI to collaborate with the OECS Bar in hosting conferences, including those that were hosted when Mr. Fadis Antoine was president, and more recently, when Ms. Jean Diver presided in so far as she is still at the helm of the OECS Bar as its president. As I leave this court, I am elated at the fact that there will be three new appointments to the Court of Appeal in the persons of Justice Ellis, Justice Price Finley, and Justice Ward. Permit me, please, Chief Justice, to congratulate them, knowing that they will do well and maintain the high standards of the Court of Appeal. I also congratulate the hardworking Mr. Carlos Michel on his well-deserved elevation as master of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. I know that he would do well. I place on record my sincere gratitude to Mr. Dylan Billy for his humanity, professionalism, and compassion. Thanks also to Chief Redishar, Ms. Michelle Sibbles. It has been my good fortune to have been afforded the opportunity of working closely with three distinguished Chief Justices of this court in the persons of Sir Hugh Rollins, Sir Dennis Byron, and our own Dame Janice. And for this, I'm very grateful. As I retire from this court, I will be taking up the position of Chief Justice of Belize, and in this way, would share my experience and expertise in serving the people of Belize. I am of the view that my service at the public bars, both in Guyana and St. Lucia, my experience in private practice, the judicial work that I have done in this court as a high court judge for nine years and as an appellate judge for 10 years, together with my experience as chair of the JEI, coupled with the fact that I've served as the president of the panel on numerous occasions, my mentorship of judges, registrars, magistrates, and administrative staff should serve me in good stead. In addition, I was privileged to have been afforded the opportunity to be a member of several regional extrajudicial committees. This should also be a boon. I am Guyanese by birth and St. Lucian by naturalization, and importantly, Caribbean by disposition. My life is one of public service, and I am a Caribbean woman jurist, though not a pioneering one as her own Dim Janice. I look forward to continuing to be a service, and I'm confident that the enduring friendships which I have formed with numerous persons in this subregion will live on. I conclude by thanking Almighty God 
my beloved departed parents, Harold and Daphne Blendman, my brother of blessed memory, Professor Dr. Lloyd Blendman, my supportive and loving sisters, Burl, Carol, Jacqueline, and Gloria, all of whom are with us this morning, my nieces and nephews, and my cousins and numerous friends across the wider region. Special thanks to my learned brother, Joseph Peel Ferrara, Queen's Council, my sisters, Joseph Peel, Designate Ellis, and Justice Guilford for their generous remarks. To the eminent Queen's Council, Mr. Montpazier, whose speech was read by Mr. Daly, Dr. Francis Alexis, Ms. E. Anne Henry, Mr. Thomas Astefan, all of Queen's Council, together with the President of the OECS Bar, Ms. Jean Dyer, members of the Otter Bar, Mrs. Josephine Gums Connor, Mr. Ronald Marks, and Mr. Jonathan Adam, for your very kind sentiments. Over the years, I have been blessed to have the support of wonderful staff members and orderlies in all of the states and territories of the OECS. And I thank all of them sincerely. Closer home at, a, at headquarters for the past 10 years, I have had the valuable support from the entire staff for which I am very grateful. I single out my secretary, Ms. Anna Joseph, without whose tremendous support and assistance, I could not achieve much of what I did. Also, my orderly, Mr. Hazel Augustine, or Officer Hazel Augustine, who has been my trusted and most reliable orderly for all of the entirety of my time on the Court of Appeal, namely 10 years. Had it not been for him, I may well have found myself on the other side of the bench as a consequence of my driving. I would like to thank my case manager, Ms. Sharon Baptist, for her dedication. I also extend my gratitude to the staff of the IT department, especially Mr. Demetrius Charles and Mr. Augustus Marcelin. I also thank the human resource department, the judicial research assistants, both past and present, the registry, the accounts department, the library, and the drivers of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. I thank all of you most sincerely. Further away, I also wish to place on record my gratitude to Ms. Diana George of the Territory of the Virgin Islands and Ms. Alila Nathaniel of Antigua and Barbuda, both of whom went beyond the call of duty to assist me. And for this, I am very grateful. To the people of the OECS region, I thank you most sincerely. It has been an honor to serve you. I have immensely enjoyed being of service to you in contributing to the maintenance of the rule of law, providing fair, timely, and efficient justice, and ensuring that the separation of powers is maintained and fundamental rights are upheld. As I leave the court to go to Belize, I remain steadfastly committed to the maintenance of the rule of law, fair and efficient justice, maintenance of separation of powers, equal access to justice, and enforcement of fundamental rights. In this subregion, many of my friends have become like my family. I know that I miss all of you, but I take comfort in the fact that I will only be a telephone call away. I'm confident that the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court will continue to grow from strength to strength and will have many more successes. I thank each and every one of you attending this special sitting and pray that Almighty God continues to bless you abundantly. For me, this is not goodbye. It is so long indeed. And I would always remember what Justice Ellis said, that I am equally a Lucian as I'm a Guyanese. And importantly, I'm a Caribbean jurist. Chief Justice, I'm very grateful to you. Yes, thank you, Justice Blenman, uh, for your response. We are, of course, seeing that we have 
online on the Zoom platform, I think over 290 persons. And I think that speaks to the interest and appreciation for your work and dedication uh, to the people of the Eastern Caribbean region. And of course, to that sterling work on the judiciary of the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, these proceedings have also been carried live on the YouTube channel and no doubt another whole group of persons would have listened in via that medium. At this stage, I wish to bring these proceedings to a close as we bid farewell uh, by virtue of the sitting to our sister Justice of Appeal Blenman. I wish to thank everyone who has attended, whether uh, by this platform, as well as those who would have followed on the YouTube channel uh, for their attendance and for their interest. We will now close this special sitting and the court will reconvene at 11.45 a.m. this morning. Thank you, and we now close. This special sitting now stands adjourned. Thank you.